Well, for a lot of calendar year 2018, the creepy porn lawyer was a bona fide star on cable news. CNN had him on so often, he brought a covered dish to the company picnic. Over on MSNBC, familiarity bred enchantment. They were starting to worship the guy. He's a beast. He's a beast, and he keeps popping Donald Trump and all of his folks in the mouth. John Meacham says he may be the savior of the republic. I owe Michael Avenatti an apology. For the last couple of weeks, I've been saying, enough already, Michael. I've seen you everywhere. What do you have left to say? I was wrong, brother. Sincere question. How dumb would you have to be to find the creepy porn lawyer impressive? He was such a transparent fraud, such a total con in it only for himself. There was no question about that ever. We told him so directly the night he came to visit us on the show. Watch. You've profited from Stormy Daniels. You've done tens of millions of dollars with the free media on the basis of your relationship with her, and she's working in strip clubs. You're exploiting her, and you know that. Why aren't you paying her some of what you're making? Sir, this is absurd. But answer my question. Why are you rich and your client sir, is not... working in CD strip clubs? Sir, do you have any idea how much money I've earned? You're on case? every cable show. You You're running no for idea. president now. You have no idea. Well, I know that you haven't paid your taxes. You like so many lawyers, you were taking advantage of her. And you pose as a feminist hero because you are shameless and the other channels let you get away with it. But you're an exploiter of a woman and you should be ashamed of it. We hate to brag. Almost never do. But tonight we're going to make a rare exception. We were right about him. Today, the creepy porn lawyer was indicted on a new set of criminal charges. They allege that he defrauded, yes, Stormy Daniels. Turns out he was not a feminist hero. According to the indictment, CPL forged her signature on a letter and then used it to steal her book advance. He blew that on hotels, restaurants, and things like that. All the while, Stormy Daniels worked in strip clubs to pay her bills. The creepy porn lawyer lived luxuriously on her misfortune. Is anyone outside of cable news surprised by this? Melissa Francis, co-host outnumbered on this network. She's a friend of ours, and she joins us tonight. Melissa, I know you are not surprised by this, but, like, the whole primetime lineup on a bunch of other channels must have their jaws open. They wanted him to be president. Yeah, they were very excited about him. And you ran through the details very well, especially looking back at that interview and what you said and him saying, oh, no, I wasn't exploiting her. It turns out, right, that he was forging her name to divert funds that were coming to her for her book deal and putting them in his account. And he says in his defense, he was tweeting today, basically, I, w I was owed that because I was his lawyer. And then you say, well, then why did you have to forge her name? And then why then did you tell her, according to the criminal indictment from the Southern District, why did you tell her that the publisher refused to pay? He's lying to her. He's lying to everyone to divert the money. But his defense is, I was owed it. And that's just one of the small things. I mean, when you look through the whole thing, with Nike, he extorted Nike. He waited till earnings period. This is all alleged and according to what the Southern District is saying and the feds are saying. But they claim that he waited until Nike's earnings period when they would be most vulnerable. And then he said, you have done wrong and I am going to have a press conference if you don't hire me right now to audit your company for $20 million <laughs> and I'll be your internal counsel to audit your company and see, but, or the caveat was you can just give me $22 million and I'll be quiet and go away. Now, these, this is all in the paperwork that came out today that we read, and he's tweeting back in his defense, I will be exonerated, I, I was owed this money in all of these different cases. All told, he could go to jail for 404 years, and in my book, it's really not enough for everything that he did. I mean, he also had bank fraud, wire fraud. He filed for bankruptcy. He lied in that proceeding, all alleged again, alleged. But this is a lot of piling on in California, in New York, all over the place. And it kind of hits on two themes that our viewers love here. Number one is hypocrisy. And that's what you really yes. put out there when you had that interview with him, where he's standing there holier than thou, filled with sanctimony, saying, this person broke the law. This person is immoral. I'm standing up for what's right and the law and this and that. And here, he, according to these officials and these law enforcement officers, he's one of the biggest criminals and predators out there, according to what they're saying. The other thing that I think is really interesting that, that your viewers love is the irony. Because you've got to yeah. think that he was doing this for a long time. I mean, there are many clients he's accused of defrauding, and he spent the money on Ferraris, they say, and on a private plane, they say. So he was living the lifestyle and defrauding people 
who were being paid for legitimate things, but he didn't get caught until he went all over television, till he was drunk That's on true. his own fame, and he had people like Stephanie Rule over there at MSNBC celebrating him, right? I mean, until he had people well, finding But where's he, their he judgment? It, it was so. It he was so with it. obvious. Look, well, I actually feel sorry for him at this stage. I mean, there's clearly something wrong with him. I don't know. I don't want to speculate, but there's clearly something wrong. There always has been something yeah. wrong with the guy. And any person who spent two minutes with him would know that. And yet somehow they didn't know that, these purveyors of facts. Well, you, you know Makes why? You because they were doing the work that they wanted done. He was out there doing the work. Exactly. He, was, he no, came exactly up with right, someone to go after Brett Kavanaugh. I mean, he always had exactly Stormy right. Daniels to go after the president. I mean, he was... He was doing the bidding of what the other networks wanted, I guess. Of course. So, so they looked He's past doing it. Doing the work of the Democratic I Party. Of I, I just think it's interesting that had he not gotten drunk on his own fame, he might have gotten away yeah. with it. It's, it's almost like a Scooby-Doo episode. <laughs> if it weren't <laughs> for you for kids. Those damn kids, right. And your dog. <laughs> right. Melissa All Francis, great to, <laughs> great great to, to see, see you, you too. Thank you.